Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Amy here. Today we're going to be wrapping up the month of April. I read slash listened to 11 books in the month of April. I had a good mix of a variety of genres, so we'll get right into it. So I had recently finished Vicious by the Swab, and I loved it. So I decided to go ahead and continue the series with Vengeful. This is the second book in the Villains series by V. E. Schwab. I didn't really care for this one as much as the first one. It just couldn't hold my attention for some reason. There were a couple more characters that we got to know and what their superpowers uh, were, I guess, so to speak. So I did, I did enjoy that, but I, I just got bored with the story. I missed Victor. Like he was still there. We still heard from him, but there was something about Victor that just wasn't there in the second book. And I just totally missed it. That's really all I have to say about book two, because I don't want to give anything away uh, if you have not read the series. But yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts were between books one and two. Did you really love did you love them both? Did you love one more than the other? I definitely preferred Vicious over Vengeful, but it wasn't terrible. I, I got through it. Uh, I just, like I said, it just couldn't hold my attention. So yeah. So then I moved on to another fantasy that I felt like I was just kind of in the mood to continue on with series this month for some reason, or the month of April. Uh, so I picked up The Toll by uh, Neil Shusterman. Once again, I didn't really care for it. I feel like my rating is not genuine because it's been it's been probably a year since I read the two books before The Toll. So it took me a while to really grasp on to the story and where we were at in the story, but it it still didn't really I don't know. I was I don't know what I was expecting in this book, but I mean, we do get, we do kind of pick up where we left off a little bit from the second book because the second book was definitely left you with a, a big cliffhanger. So, so yeah, I was, I, I wanted more of that. I wanted more, I wanted more of Citra and Rowan. That's what I wanted more of. And I just felt like I didn't get it in this book. I felt like it, we were concentrating on more of another character and that's fine. I, I know he, he was a very important role in this book but it just didn't work for me. Uh, like I said, I don't know if my 2.5 rating is really a fair rating just because it's been so long and like I said, it took me a while to really get into the story because I could not figure out where we were at and I I just, like, it was the story was just lost to me. So. I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I feel bad about giving a, a 2.5 because I really did like the first two books, but yeah, this one, this one just kind of fell short for me. I gave Vengeful uh, two and a half stars as well. <laughs> Next up, The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. Uh, this was released on April 26. Let me know in the comments. Ha have any of y'all read it yet? Uh, I have a whole vlog on this book, so if you want to check it out, I'll have it linked down below. But yeah, I gave this four stars. I really had a good time with the book. I enjoyed the story. I really love the timelines. We follow Vi back in 1978, I think. Is it 1978? Yes. And then Lizzie in 2019. So in 1978, Vi and her brother Eric live with their grandmother who is also like the head psychiatrist of um hillside inn which is basically um i want to say like a mental institute it it is a home for for mental patients so yeah there's a backstory there there's some secrets there um and then in 2019 we we have lizzie who is a monster hunter she hears of a young girl that has been abducted by a monster. It's like a rumor like this girl got abducted by this monster. So Lizzie, being the monster hunter, goes to look for the girl to save her. I really enjoyed the back and forth and the how these two stories melded together and how they were connected. Yeah, it was just a great read. This would be a great read for spooky season because um, it's kind of around like the October Halloween setting in here. 
Um, so I really enjoyed that aspect of the book. I did kind of figure out what was happening and the ending just felt a little underwhelmed for me but other than that I had I had a great time and like I said if you want more on that um, I, I'll have my um, vlog link down below if you want to go check that. So then I decided it was time for a male male romance. Uh, so I started Role Model. This is number five in the Game Changer series. Uh, and this is by Rachel Reed. I have been loving the series. And this book did not let me down. This is Troy and Harris's story. Um, Troy was traded to the Ottawa team because there was um, a, a conflict with the other team that he was on. But Ottawa is glad to have Troy on their team. Ilya Rosanov is also on the Ottawa team. He Ottawa team. <laughs> he is uh, the team captain. So it was so much fun to be back with Ilya. I love Ilya to death. And I did listen to this on audio. And I have to say, they did a bang up job on Ilya's um, narration. Cooper North uh, narrated the book and it was fantastic um yeah so i really enjoyed being back there with ilya and there was a little bit of a tease with shane there as well but yeah troy and harris uh, so harris is the social media manager for the team and uh, so him and troy sort of form a friendship as troy's coming into um the you know he's coming into the team due to what happened with the other team Fans aren't really on Troy's side, but Harris is here here to help. So like I said, they kind of form a friendship and, you know, things grow from there. Troy is in the closet. Uh, he was in a relationship before, but that kind of ended because the other guy was ready to come out. Troy was not kind of thing. So we have that sort of in the background. Troy is just trying to uh, get his place on the team before he really expresses like who he really is um, but the more he's with Harris the more Harris is sort of bringing that side of Troy out and it was it was so much fun to read and I enjoyed um, how Harris just kind of like took Troy and just brought him out into the world and just made Troy feel comfortable about it uh, so yeah it was super fun read I, I love all these guys like I said I can't wait for the long game which is out now and my book's on the way so <laughs> five stars by the way i don't know if i said that like i said it was time for series this month so i picked up this is try me by nev wilder this is the second book in the extra curricular activities series i gave it five stars i absolutely loved it i i felt like it was a lot deeper than the first book like the first book was just fun and um a, a a little bit on the smutty side and this one was just more serious and deep i guess that's really the only the only word I could, i'm looking for i want i kept wanting to say it was dark but it really wasn't dark it was just deep and intense and a very intense love story so we have mark and chet mark and chet grew up together they have been best friends since they were like in middle school their parents were friends something happened along the way when they were in their teens and really sort of just discovering themselves something happened between the two families Chet lost pretty much everything. His family lost pretty much everything. So um, there was a little bit of hatred between the families and Mark and Chet just drew apart from each other. Mark went down a different road than Chet did. Uh, Chet ran into a little bit of, of a drug problem. So there's a little bit of drug abuse in there as well. But now they are in college and they are actually at the same law firm for their internship. They're both law students or about want to be law students. So they're interns. They find out that they're going to be together. Uh, and then, of course, the firm puts them together as partners in the firm. So... There's a lot of like heated banter that happened between them that I absolutely loved. 
it was it was very a very much hate to love kind of relationship but as they were like exploring themselves or getting to know each other after all these years the the banter between them just even though they were getting to a point where they were actually liking each, each other the banter was still like very like kind of hate banter like teasing each other um but it was so good i i love these guys like I said, a little bit different from the first one. The first one's a little smutty, but it was still really good. This one was just more on the serious, deeper side. So yeah, but I loved it. Then I picked up Nine Lives by uh, Peter Swanson. I actually really enjoyed this book, even though I gave it like a three and a half star. I really liked it. Like I feel like maybe I should give it a four star maybe. Um, yeah, I have three and a half written down, but I, I'm, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I really did like this book. Yes, it was very underwhelming at the end, but I really enjoyed the, the story as a whole. Basically, nine people get a letter and it just has a list of nine names and one of, one of the names is their name. So we are following all nine of these people as well as a detective, um, I believe his name is Sam, Sam, Sam Hamilton, right? Yes, Sam Hamilton. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're following like 10 people in this book. At first I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be overwhelming, but it, it really wasn't. It was just very interesting to see or, or to get the point of views from these characters and how they were trying to figure out what this meant and they were trying to figure out how these other names linked to them and they were like searching for these other other people and it was it was really interesting like the, the plot was really interesting but once we got to the to like the nitty-gritty of it to the ending everything started to like you know come together like what is happening? What is going on? Who's sending these letters? Why is he sending these letters to these nine Pacific people? I wasn't impressed. <laughs> um, but like I said, it was still a good time. I did listen to this on audio and we have two narrators. The audio was fantastic. I really enjoyed the, the narration. It, it really fit with the story. But yeah, even though I enjoyed like the whole like, why is this happening? Why am I getting this, this letter with nine people eight other people on it plus me what do they mean what do they mean what does it mean who how do they relate to me like like it was just really it was it was really engaging and um a very like i was i was into it and then and then i was just not <laughs> it wasn't like it wasn't terrible i i think i could bump this up to maybe a four star because i, I just I, I couldn't put it down for a while and then we get to the end and you're just like Okay. <laughs> I couldn't wait any longer, so I picked up The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Loved it. Another four stars. Um, not, not The Sundown Motel. The Sundown Motel is still my favorite Simone St. James as of right now, but I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I did listen to it on audio. The audio is fantastic. So we have two timelines. We're in 2017. Uh, we're following Shay around, and then we're also getting a backstory of Beth um, in 1977. And it kind of it kind of goes further back from 1977. Like she, we start off in 1977, and she takes us back to where it all all started, I guess, um, and leading up to her time line in this book so she's also beth is also um in 2017 um so shay is a true crime blogger uh she is also a receptionist at a doctor's office but one of her blogs is about the lady killer and beth was accused back in 1977 of being the lady killer she was acquitted of this murder because there was not enough evidence um, to charge her. So when she walks into the place where Shay works, the doctor's office, Shay is like starstruck and she, she gets the courage and she approaches Beth and asks her an interview. And for some reason, after all these years of Beth 
not wanting to tell her story, she is ready to tell her story to Shay. Shay also has a little bit of a backstory herself, um, which is why she sort of came became a true, a true crime <laughs> blogger. And then, like I said, we get Beth's story from where it all started, not just in 1977 when she was acquitted for the murders, but dating back to that to lead up to the the murders and then to 2017 and where Beth is uh, now and what it all means. I really had no idea where their story was going. I I I loved it. It like I said, it it didn't it didn't live up to the Sundown Motel, but I I really still did like it. Oh, and I can't forget about the Greer Mansion where Beth grew up in. So we have, it's very creepy, by the way. So we have a little bit of a haunted house sort of story in the mix. So, so yeah, that was the sort of creep aspect to the book. I, en I really enjoyed it. Should I give it a five star? <laughs> Then I picked up Heartstoppers Volume 4. I had to because the new little movie on Netflix came out on the 22nd of April. I was super excited to watch it. I didn't know how, you know, where we were going to be, if it was going to be just an entire, like, movie, like, including this book. Um, so just FYI, it it's a series. Um, I binge watched the whole thing, season one, and it's the first two graphic novels. So, so yeah, if you've read the first two, go check out Heartstoppers on Netflix. It's fantastic. Even if you haven't read it, just, just go watch it and you will want to, you will want to read it. It is adorable. It is perfect. I, I laughed. I cried. And the characters were just on point, on point. I actually have a vlog. I think I have like a reading vlog with, um, all three is it all three of these books? I don't remember. Maybe it was a male male romance mixed into there. Uh, but I have a vlog. This is in there of me watching the movie and blubbering all over myself. Uh, so I'll have that link down below. Uh, but anyway, volume four gets a little bit deeper into Nick and Charlie's story. Here we are dealing with uh, eating disorder, anxiety, depression, anorexia um, a very a very deep little story in this one um, and Nick so Charlie is dealing with all these things and Nick is just he just wants to help Charlie and he doesn't know how so he's doing everything he possibly can um, you know it's 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 hurting Nick to see Charlie like that and then it's Charlie is oh it was so sad I cried for this book I cried watching the, the show. Yeah, so this one was super cute, but definitely more on the deeper side of Nick and Charlie's relationship. And I really think um, it, it brought Nick and Charlie closer together. Uh, uh, Nick is such a sweetheart. I mean, Charlie is too, but oh my goodness. Nick is so sweet. Uh, anyway, so yeah, <laughs> five stars. Absolutely loved it. It was time for another male male romance, so I picked up Ache by Marley Valentine. I gave this one a three star. Um, in the it took me a long time to to really get into the story, and I wasn't really clicking with the characters. I don't know what it was. Um, but we have so we have Jordan and Gael. I think it's, it's I did listen to this on audio because Teddy Hamilton was one of the narrators. Uh, and he's like my favorite, as y'all know. But the other narrator, he was good too. I, I enjoyed his voice for for Gael. Teddy Hamilton was the voice of Jordan, and Gael was the had a, a separate voice. And his voice was great for him. But I didn't like it for other characters, in, in, including Jordan. Um, but other than that, it, it did just take me a while to to get into um, the story and to connect with these guys. So Jordan came out when he was a teenager. His parents kicked him out, long story short, and Gael's family took him in, no questions asked. So he was basically raised um, by Gael's parents and his whole family, and they've just been the best of friends. 
Lyle is actually to be getting married to a woman. So Jordan, even though this hurts his heart, but he is going to give Gael a bachelor party in Vegas. So that's kind of when the story starts to take place. And of course, Gael and Jordan share a room together. We get both point of view. So we get, um, we, we get the feelings that Gael has felt for Jordan all these years, but didn't really know where to place it. Uh, didn't really understand what it was like was it just this deep connection he had with Jordan because they were just the best of friends or was it something more um, it took him a while to really realize that it was something more and I think um, on this and it, it just started to to grow over time um, there's a reason for the whole being engaged to a woman thing um, so yeah the story got better as as it went along but it, it just it was just hard to get into in the beginning and I just couldn't connect with the characters but but then the story started getting really it started to pick up that's all I'm gonna say about I don't want to give too much away it is rather a short story it was only like six hours um, and I think I listened to it like in one day but yeah there's a lot more to the story but yeah it's definitely a best friends to lovers type of story like I said I enjoyed it it just took me a while to really get into it the next two books and last two books I'm gonna talk about I actually did recently did a reading vlog on this was these were the two books that I read for the spring flingoween so I'll have that link down below um, so yeah we'll start with jar of hearts this was a, a four-star read for me I really enjoyed it I was into it like I was like okay this is gonna be a five star and I guess it, it still probably could be this maybe a more of a four and a half star for me. Um, like I, it, was, it was fantastic. But then we get a twist towards the end. And after that, I just, I, I basically figured out what was happening. But I mean, you know, that doesn't always ruin it for me. So anyway, we're, we follow Georgina Shaw throughout the majority of this book and uh, the the book opens up with a courtroom scene and Gio, Georgina or Gio, um, is basically being arrested for the murder of her friend Angela Wong like 14 years ago. Angela went missing 14 years ago and her remains were just discovered and Gio has been arrested for the murder and goes to prison. So we follow her through this time in prison and then of course afterwards and like where also from her time 14 years ago when all this happened, what really happened leading up to current times. It was really, it was really intense, really good. Um, definitely some trigger warnings of rape in here. But like I said in the vlog, it, it wasn't graphically told. Um, as I don't like, I don't like rape scenes. I, I will skip over them or just not read the book. Um, but this, it wasn't like really told. You just knew about it. You knew it was, it was happening. Um, and that's all. You just knew it was there, basically. So if that's a trigger warning for you of not picking up a book like me, uh, just know that it's not graphically told, in my opinion, anyway. Um, it's there and you know it's happening, it's currently happening, but it's it's told in a very good way. That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> the author did a good job with that scene. So yeah, more like a four and a half star. It was a really good story. Very intense, deep, a little bit dark. Um, I definitely want to pick up some more Jennifer Hillier. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite Jennifer Hillier book? What should I pick up next? Um, did you like Jar of Hearts? Let me know. And then last but definitely not least, Yes Daddy by uh, Jonathan Parks Fromage. <sighs> Five stars. Loved, loved this book. I was actually ready to not like this book. I haven't really heard much about the book. It had a pretty good rating on Goodreads, but I was still kind of skeptical. Like I didn't know exactly where we were going to go. Um, but it, you hit the ground 
running with this book. I mean, from start to finish. Uh, so again, we have a court scene in the beginning. Jonah is on the stand. He makes a statement that kind of leaves you like guessing what what could have possibly happened. Um, so like I said, it kind of catches you right off the bat. And we, we go back to Jonah um, telling us the story. Um, he's actually talking to someone in this book, just like a second person point of view, just like with you. Um, and it's, it's done really good in this book as well. So yeah, Jonah is talking to someone. We don't really know who that someone is until we kind of get midway to the book. So he starts us off, he tells us how he met uh, Richard Shriver. Richard Shriver is a famous playwright. Jonah is a struggling playwright or wants to be a playwright. So basically they, they meet and um, start, start a relationship. Richard whisks Jonah away to his Hampton estate and that's really where the story starts. Like all that little bit before was just kind of a buffer and then we really get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, I will say this is culty. I feel like it was a little bit of a cult vibe there. This has lots of trigger warnings. There's rape in here. Once again, it's done. It's written well. It's there. You know, it's happening. It's just not graphically told, which I'm thankful for. Um, there's trauma. There's depression, anxiety, uh, suicide. Lots of triggers up in this book. <laughs> I kind of described it as a horror story. It, it really is a horror story. Like, I felt for Jonah. Jonah just couldn't, like, once he thought he was doing good, someone took him for granted kind of thing. It was, it was an amazing story. Um, I really, I just really enjoyed it the whole way through. Like I said, it was, it was a very much a horror story, but not in like that. It's not like a horror book. It was just, a horrible story just Jonah's life um, very deep intense dark I I loved it <laughs> so that's it y'all those are all the books I read in the month of April I did two reading vlogs so I'll have those linked down below if you want to go check them out hear more about the books thank y'all always for watching hope you're all doing well out there hugs from me all around and I'll see y'all very soon in a new video Bye, y'all.